Let's have a quick look at a sketch of the type of microscope that we will set up for standard bright field imaging or Köhler illumination. For this, the most important parts of the microscope are the following. At the top, the light source, which in our case is an LED illuminator. The condenser that bundles the light to illuminate our specimen. The microscope stage that holds the specimen. The revolving nose piece into which we screw one or more objectives. Two objectives that we have encountered in the previous video are shown on the right. The eyepieces and one or more camera ports. We will use the one that is part of the trinocular head of the microscope. Our camera is a small USB camera shown on the right along with a scale that has units of centimeters. When setting up curl illumination, we generally have to make the following adjustments. We need to focus on our specimen using the focusing knob. We need to also focus the condenser by moving it vertically using the shown knob. We may have to center the condenser laterally using two thumb screws. And finally, we need to adjust two diaphragms, the field diaphragm, also called field stop or F stop, and the condenser diaphragm or A stop. Now I have mounted one of the two objectives shown earlier on the microscope. This is the microscope used in our research, but let's not get distracted by the custom-built add-ons today. Pay close attention to the way the thumb of the operator moves when turning the focusing knob and the direction in which the objective moves as a result. Unfortunately, this relationship is not necessarily the same on microscopes made by different manufacturers. Moving the objective out of the way, as seen just now, is part of the first step of our setup procedure. We also move the condenser out of the way by raising it and, if possible, tilting the whole microscope arm backwards. Now that we have made room, we can place our specimen on the stage without bumping into the objective or condenser. Today our specimen is a microscale that is generally used to establish the final magnification of recorded images. The actual tiny ruler is only one millimeter long. It is located in the center of the circle whose equator and poles are marked by short crossbars. Because our microscope is an inverted microscope, we're placing the microscale upside down on the specimen holder. Next, we raise the objective, lower the condenser and adjust the two diaphragms so that we get enough light in the eyepieces to start looking for our specimen. Here I am opening both the condenser aperture and then the field stop all the way. The next step is to find the specimen. For this I move the stage around until I see some kind of image of any part of the specimen. Often this can just be a faint shadow. The image on the computer may look something like this. Here we go, we found something. Now let's focus on this feature. This is part of the circle surrounding the microscale. Let's move the stage along the circle until we find one of the crossbars. There it is. But something is not right. The bar should be horizontal or vertical. In the eyepieces everything looks fine. This means that we need to rotate the camera. Here's the camera port. The USB camera is attached through a 1x C-mount adapter. We loosen the screws at the camera port and rotate the camera as needed. Since we have found a crossbar at the equator of the circle, we move the stage only in the X direction towards the center. Some final camera rotation may be needed to straighten the image of the scale. But the image is still not displayed properly. The software has stretched it to fit it into the current window size. I have changed this now so the image is shown at the correct aspect ratio. Now we can start optimizing the illumination of the specimen by placing the condenser at the correct position, both vertically and laterally. The proper vertical position can be found with the help of the field stop. First I am closing the field aperture all the way. 
Then I lower the condenser until a more or less sharp image of the outline of this aperture is seen in the same plane as the specimen. After focusing the condenser in this manner, I center it by moving it laterally with the two thumb screws at the top. The field stop should not obscure the image of my specimen, so I reopen it as needed. Finally, let's find the correct setting for the condenser aperture. I first open it all the way and then gradually close it while observing the overall brightness of the image. The optimal aperture is the one where the image just starts getting darker. At this point, the adjustable numerical aperture of the condenser more or less matches the NA of the objective. And this concludes our setup of curl elimination.